Hey there, hope you're doing good. Today I wanted to show you how we onboarded users onto FutureCam, my startup. FutureCam was a camera app and the onboarding showed people what it can do. This is the first screen. It says capture beautiful light trail photos. And there's a the next button and you can see the silhouette effect. When the user clicks next, he goes to this light trail video and notice the next button becomes enabled only after a minute. Let me go back. When the screen changes, notice the next button is disabled. That is because, and by the way, this is a YouTube video showing the app in action, which I'm playing and narrating over it. So, I mean, it was a screen recording. So um, the reason the next button is disabled initially is we don't want the user to blindly click next, next, next. We want him to take a minute to understand and appreciate what the app can do. Again, a time-lapse video. These are auto-playing infinite looping videos. They play forever. Here, this is an interactive screen. You have the shutter speed slider in the middle and help text telling you to drag it. And what happens? It changes the shutter speed after capture and only when you drag it does the next button became, become enabled. Let me go back and show you again. See it's disabled and now it has become enabled. This is a comparison slider. So if the guy in blue is your friend and you're photographing him in front of a monument or public place and you have all these people coming in the way, including the guy in yellow who is me and the guy in the gray shirt in the background, future cam detects and removes them. This is a zoom. So that's the end of the onboarding. So why did we build this onboarding? For a few reasons. The first is some users didn't understand what the app is. What does it do? How is it different from the iPhone camera app? Because iPhone camera app takes photos and so does FutureCam. Some people thought it's a clone and it's anything but a clone. So the onboarding presents what it is. Otherwise people will jump to conclusions. The second reason we have onboarding is to impress users so that they see that this is a great app and stick around. So when someone installs an app, they're quickly deciding if the app is worth keeping. So you as an app developer need to win that battle first. The third reason we have onboarding is to sell benefits and not features. The features are things like long exposure, light rail video, time lapse, etc. But what can you do with them? For example, using a long exposure, we created the silhouette effect we saw earlier. This one. This is a benefit. The feature is long exposure. And users don't care about features. Features are just a means to an end, which is benefits. So the onboarding shows the benefits. Now, many people told me that you can't have so many screens in an onboarding, like nine in our case. You have to have max three. And 
furthermore people said that you can't like disable the next button make them watch a short video even if it is for three seconds you can't force them to interact with a slider if you do all that people will leave i understood where they were coming from as a user i am annoyed too i skip the onboarding every time but then if it doesn't work i blame the app so users are irrational they won't invest the time necessary to learn to use an app but then they'll blame the app uninstall it i mean later on if they get into trouble they won't feel that oh you know i kind of uh, didn't pay attention to the onboarding let me read the help they'll just uninstall it so you know i had to force it down users throats this way if you will and actually it wasn't perceived that way by users despite me being annoyed with other apps onboarding and my teammates kind of not liking a long onboarding we had a 94 percent completion rate for the onboarding so the onboarding i mean i didn't expect it to perform so well given that there are like nine screens requiring delays and interaction but it worked well so there are two kind of morals from this story one is conventional wisdom is often wrong if you ask three people and all three people tell you something that doesn't mean it's right any of these conventional wisdoms they are all wrong for example you need to um get allow the user to get to the point of the app very quickly take photos etc not get into a long onboarding whatever the conventional wisdom is these features are necessary for this app it's, it's often wrong or even if it is right it may not be it may take too much time to implement and not give commensurate value so it may not be the right thing for you to do now so whatever the specifics at a high level be skeptical of conventional wisdom and advice you'll also learn more that way if you blindly follow something you won't learn the second um, take away from this onboarding is that it's not the quantity of clicks but the quality it's not that you have to click nine times next next it is that you're getting something useful you're seeing beautiful photos you are seeing the capabilities of the app so as long as there is value in each screen the number of screens doesn't matter this onboarding also put to rest questions like hey, what is this app i don't know should i use it why should i use it etc so the first kind of burden like what is this app even all this got sorted out when we implemented this onboarding So anyway just wanted to share that with you